which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which above, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Amen. 26 verse, But Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Amen. Revelations chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, verse 1, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are vexed, are, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Amen. And the 18th chapter continues with the complete destruction of Babylon. I like to preach along the line tonight of a a message which I will call a tale of two cities. Amen. It's not a new phrase. Amen. Uh, Dickens uh, wrote his tale of two cities to tell the story of England and France in the time of the French Revolution. Amen. And just across the English Channel there was peace. Just across the English Channel there was revival. Just across the English Channel, there was John Wesley, Charles Wesley, and George Whitefield, praise God, and mighty reformers, praise God, having revival amid great persecution, but yet having revival, praise God. They took hold of England, and they took hold of the United States, uh, and rocked two continents uh, into the positive side of the scale in God's uh, annals of judgment. Amen. Judgment fell on France. Judgment fell on Paris. Heads rolled every day as every wise and every thoughtful and every money man and every learned man and every teacher and every government official had his head cut off uh, until there was almost no one left fit to reign in France. Amen. So went the French Revolution. No one was safe. Just a wrong word on the street. Just an idle word in the alleyway. Amen. Somebody catch you with a little money. Somebody catch you with a little extra food left over. Amen. Yeah. You was immediately suspect. You would be a candidate for the guillotine. Amen. And the madam knitted in Dickens' tale of two cities as the head rolled and the blood ran red. Amen. In the French Revolution. Yes. Revival saved the day for England. The lack of it cursed France. Amen. I like to talk about a tale of two cities. Jerusalem 
and Babylon. Amen. I never thought of it quite until it was brought to my attention. I feel by the Spirit of God. Amen. But the whole history of the world, church, and all of it, amen, is a tale of two cities. It's Babylon and Jerusalem. Amen. That's it. Praise God. I mean, brother, that's it. Praise God. Everything good was copied from the Jerusalem which is above, which is the mother of us all, and everything bad was copied from Babel and carried over in its various fragments. Amen. Even to much that goes in the guise of religion today in the good old United States of America. Amen. Even much that goes in the guise of freedom and politics today is Babel and Lehigh. Amen. In American life. Amen. Every false religion in the world today is Babylon rehashed. Amen. Do you think Rome is the Babylon it's talking about? No, Rome is just one small part of it. Amen. Every false religion with the hundreds of millions of adherents, uh, amen, is Babylon today. Amen. It has permeated every false religion, every cult, every move of the occult. Amen. Is Babylon having its revival, its various fragments in the world today. Some days they seem at odds. Sometimes they seem like enemies of each other. Sometimes they fight even. But they always manage to get together long enough to kill the saints. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's a lot of independent states in Russia today. Amen. The Ukraine and the Balkans and, uh, and uh, a lot of other places. Amen. In that land it was once the United Soviet Socialist Republic is now scattered to the four winds. Amen. But they all got together. To kill the saints. Amen. Why did communism, why did tyranny take over in many nations of the world? Because false religion did not put up any deterrent to the tyranny and the anarchy and the dictatorships that rode with iron-nailed shoes nail shoes over the souls of men. I thought I'd preach this at camp meeting. Amen. This tale of two cities. Amen. This Jerusalem and Babylon. Praise God. Let me tell you about two cities a little more in our recent history to show you what I'm driving at. In 1906, prayer meetings were going on day and night and had been for some time in Los Angeles, California. Sometimes they would pray all night. Amen. Frank Bartleman and others were mightily used of God. They were in correspondence with the revival in Wales uh, who were having their revival also. And they were praying for each other. Amen. The revival was going full steam ahead in Wales, uh, praise God, and save the day for that country, praise God, yes, glory to God, revival in answer to prayer was the answer to Wales needs. It was the answer to their poverty. It was the answer to the mines running out. It was the answer to the pollution. It was the answer to the politi pro political problem. I incidentally, amen, when people have religious revival, they also have political reform, amen, to the good. Did you ever notice that? Amen. Praise God. Frank Bottleman records in his diary another mighty wave rolls in. Amen. How that April the 15th in 1906 in Bonnie Bay Street as people sought God and had been seeking God for days. Amen. A black lady got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues. That was April the 15th. 
Amen. I mean, you talk about a rift. You talk about an earthquake. It rocked the religious world. Men were forced to make a decision. Praise God. But a movement started that shook the earth from one end to the other. It didn't stop with its tremors and aftershocks, but rather, praise God, it steamrolled ever onward. Amen. If the devil thought he had rest for a little while, amen, they would revive it and have another mighty move of God. Praise God. And from 196 right on through the the roaring twenties, praise God, we had Pentecostal awakening and revival. Some of the greatest miracles that the world had ever known. Amen. You talk about earthquakes. Amen. The Anderson in an Indiana First Church of God. Amen. They're all up and down the valley. They're quite strong in this particular area. Amen. Considered fundamental. Amen. They sent an embassage to that meeting to look in on it. They came back to say it was of the devil. Amen. They never got anywhere. They never got off the ground. Amen. They never, they're not strong yet anywhere but right in around Anderson, Indiana. Amen. They got some pretty good churches around here, but they've not made any inroads in all the world. Why? Their revival could have rocked the world also, but it ground to a screeching halt. Amen. Because they said the move of God was of the devil. Amen. That was April the 15th, 1906. April the 19th, 1906. Amen. A mighty earthquake. A gigantic earthquake completely destroyed all the business district. Amen. Of that Sodom and Gomorrah of that day, San Francisco, California. Just up the way in the San Andres Fault. Amen. San Francisco was destroyed. What the earthquake did not do, the fires did afterwards. It was like Sodom and Gomorrah. The pall of smoke and the pall of doom was everywhere. The earth opened up in great gapping holes and swallowed people even into the earth. 500 people died on the spot. Over 300 million dollars in damage and in 1906 a dollar was still a dollar calculate that in modern day terms it would be almost incalculable amen what the earthquake did not do and the fire did not do the dynamite crews amen of the volunteers did to try to stop the fire they dynamited line after line of buildings whole segments of the city trying to establish a a fire break and stop the fire but the fire continued to roll amen what was the difference between San Francisco on April the 19th, 1906, and Los Angeles amen the same month in 1906 a small tremor shook Los Angeles. It didn't hurt the revival. It just intensified it. It didn't hurt the prayer meeting. It just intensified it. Amen. People ran out into the streets. Amen. Just in case the worst happened. And then went right back to revival. Praise God. The glory rolled. The fire of God fell. And revival of an historic nation that rocked the whole world back on its heels started at Los Angeles. You know why it started at Los Angeles? They began to read the Bible and went back to that which begun at Jerusalem. Amen. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Hallelujah. Jerusalem and Azusa Street, we could say maybe is the mother and father of our present day movement. Hallelujah. You say, what are you, Catholic or Protestant? Neither one. I'm Pentecost. Amen. Woo! Glory to God, and that's better. Amen. Why are you, Democrat or Republican? Neither one. I'm Pentecost, and that's better. You can vote right. Vote like you feel. Vote any way you want to. Any way the Lord leads you. Amen. If you're Pentecost, hallelujah. Amen. A tale of two cities. Amen. 
Amen. A city called Hebron, where Abraham dwelt in the plains of Mamre. And a city called Lot, excuse me, Sodom, where Lot dwelt. Amen. Oh, yes. It's the same kind of a story. While Abraham was praying through and visited by angels, amen, and getting promises and sons of promise, glory to God, and a guarantee of the future, thank God, oh yes, because Abraham walked with God, God said, I'll make your seed like a star of heaven and like a dust of the earth for multitude. Count those stars, Abraham. Can't count them. Amen. Too many stars. Your seed can be like that. Glory to God. But look at Lot. Amen. Lot vexed his righteous soul with the wicked deeds of the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. Finally wound up mayor of the town on the city council. Amen. Abraham had to save all their hides, including Lot. Lot didn't have enough of the power of God in his life, even though he was a man of faith. And he was called righteous. He was borderline. He didn't have enough power to influence even his own family. He didn't have enough power with God to influence even his own life. Amen. Amen. God holds the husband responsible for his household. Amen. Glory to God. God don't hold grandma responsible for the household. A lot of times grandma bring that child up here, mom and dad sitting back here. The wrong one's got the kid up here to be prayed for. Amen. Dad's the one that needs to be blamed, sitting there like a knot on a log, like he don't even know what he's supposed to be doing. Amen. He's supposed to be the one, amen, taking the lead in his house. That's a trouble with Lot. He didn't know what he was supposed to be doing. Amen. Praise God. Lot lost his whole family. Praise God. Amen. Oh, Joshua, he had the answer. He said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. They didn't even get to vote on it. Amen. Amen. He said, we're going to serve God. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to church. Amen. They didn't even get to vote on it. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, Lord, they don't like it. Take them till they do. Amen. Well, our kids don't like to go to church. Call you have and took them. Amen. You fed them on joke. Amen. Bless God. Our kids say it's boring to go to church. Bless your heart. Amen. Take them long enough. Take them long enough and, 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 and times enough that I will change after a while. Praise God. God holds a husband responsible for his household. It's time men set up with a backbone instead of a piece of spaghetti. Or a red worm for a backbone, amen, and took the lead to their family for God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God said to Abraham, said, I know him. I can't even keep what I'm about to do from Abraham because I know him. And he will command his house and his children after him. You can't even be a deacon if you don't command your house and your children after you. Man don't rule the house of God, how shall he rule the house of God? You can't be a bishop if you don't command your house and your children after you. Amen. No, 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 a thousand times no. Amen. Why? Because you got too many troubles at home uh, to have to, you, a lot ought to have been at home instead of sitting at the gate in the city of Sodom. He ought to have been home uh, watching who his daughters was marrying. Amen. His sons-in-law mocked him. Amen. They wouldn't go with him. His wife looked back, didn't pay any attention. Amen. To the angel stern rebuke. You know why she didn't? Amen. Let me, amen, let me present why I think she didn't. 
Amen. She responded to that angel just like she responded to her husband all through the years. Amen. When Lot said something, why, just as soon as he got out of sight, she did something else besides what he commanded. Amen. Glory to God. And when that angel came by, listen to me, ladies. Uh, amen. I'm not going to make it too hard on you. This is Bible, and this is right, and this will make it easy on you. Amen. You'll respond to God just like you respond to your husband, believe it or not. Amen. I mean, big angels come knocking on your door. You respond to angels just like you respond to your husband. Now listen to me. Everybody can't be the head of the house. If you got two heads, you got a Siamese monstrosity. You got a disaster. Amen. If you got three heads, you really got problems. Amen. There's just room for one head in a household. Amen. Oh, yes. Bless God. I'm the head of my house. If you don't believe it, just ask my wife. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's a, that's a loaded, uh, that's a loaded statement in case you didn't know it. Amen. It's supposed to be a joke, but y'all missed the punchline. Amen. Uh, uh, glory to God. God said, I cannot keep this from Abraham because he will command his house and his children after him. Amen. And then God broke it to him. I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham begged from Hebron and from the plains of Mamre. Abraham begged for the safety of Sodom. Amen. For the salvation of Sodom. Amen. But there was no salvation for Sodom. There was no hope, no help for Sodom because there wasn't any help on the inside. The devil got Sodom from the inside. You know where he destroys most churches? From the inside. Amen. Praise God. The saints of God that live in a city will make a difference in that city. True saints of God living in any town will make a difference in their town. And for the most part, most folks won't even realize who made the difference. Now if things get real bad, as in the case of Elijah and the drought and the famine... They blamed Elijah for it. Amen. When things got real bad. But they never gave Elijah any credit. Nor God either. When things got good. Yeah, Shane, you hit the thing right on the button. Amen. We're better off than we think we are. We need to count our blessings. Amen. Oh, yeah. We need to see where God brought us from and where he brought us to. Praise God. Hey, what kind of city do you live in? Amen. Some folks moved into this town, just coming into town. And amen, they stopped on the outskirts of town to a group of men and asked an elderly gentleman that looked like he might be wise. Said, what kind of town is this? Well, he said, what kind of town did you come from? He said, well, we come from a good town. We had good neighbors, and we had good friends, and we had good accord. Amen. We came from a good town. He said, this town will be good. Amen. And then some more people later on came and stopped at the same place and said, we're thinking about moving into this town. What kind of town is this? He said, what kind of town did you come from? They said, it's the worst place I ever saw. Said, there's the most gossips. Worst people talk, talk, talk. Gossip, uh, a fuss, quarrel. It, it, that's why we left. Said, it's just the worst place in the world to have to live. Said, this will be the same kind of town. Your town. Amen. 
to be or not to be. Just what you make it. Your church <laughs> to be or not to be. Just what you make it. Amen. All every church needs is just the right man. The man for the hour to pull things together. Amen. That man will come in and he'll overlook many of the things that's wrong. There's one thing William Seymour, the first pastor of that Azusa Street Revival, had that some pastors need today. He had one blind eye. Amen. I tell folks I pastored every church I pastored with one ear stopped up and one eye shut. Amen. Sometimes you need to give people time. Amen. Oh, I know there's some folks want me to grab the bull by the horns. Amen. But if they'd have been the bull, and sometimes they was, because the horns, I found out, change his heads. The devil puts them on different people if you stay around long enough. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, yes. I've been kicked in the shins and in the teeth by my friends because I stayed around long enough a few times. Amen. But I didn't get discouraged because I knew it would change after a while. And the shoe would be on another foot. Amen. Oh, yes. We need to make a difference where we live. We need to make a difference where we go to church. Amen. Hey! If I just had a better church to go to, I'd do something for God. No, you wouldn't. If you're not doing something right now, you wouldn't. Amen. Most preachers are just looking for an opportunity to do something for God. Amen. So I've took the churches that were split and splintered and depressed from scandal. Amen. I... Finally saw it was hard to see him. Amen. It was hard work and, and a heavy load to carry. And I didn't like my job at first. But I decided there wasn't any use to build and pioneer any other great churches if we didn't try to heal the ones we had. Amen. Praise God. We need to make a difference. We need camp meetings and revivals and prayer meetings and Saturday night services. That makes a difference. That's just a little above the routine. Hallelujah. A little bit out of the groove. Come on. Amen. A little bit out of the ordinary. Come on. Glory to God. If England had revival and France had revolution, which would you rather have? Heads cut off. Our souls saved and churches built. Amen. Which would you rather have? Wesley. Amen. And Whitefield. And Fletcher. And Finnelon. Amen. And mighty reformers and mighty preachers. Praise God. And others that followed in their wake. Or would you have rather had the old no count grave robber by the name of Carton? Him and his gang, amen, went out at night in the tale of two cities in France. And they robbed graves for a living. Carton was a drunk. Carton was a there too well But he took a turn for the better in his latter days. That young man that came from England to do business, who wound up in jail through misunderstanding and was sentenced to die. Amen. Carton went in to visit him and took his place in jail in the tale of two cities. And the young man escaped, praise God, with his bride-to-be across the English Channel just in time because somebody took his place. Carton took his place in jail. Carton took his place at the guillotine. Amen. Carton's head rolled instead of the young man from England. I want to tell you tonight, regardless of how bad your state is, how bad your city is, 
how bad your family is, there's hope for you because Jesus Christ took your place. He's laying in your cell tonight or lay in your cell yesterday. He laid there for you and satisfied the justice of a just God. Amen. And all you've got to do, praise God, is run for it. Run for the cross. Run for that land of Beulah they sang about. Run for that heavenly Jerusalem tonight. Run for that altar and get saved. Run, run, run tonight and get hipped up with that heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. That young man from England, that banker from England and his bride-to-be made their escape by the skin of their teeth across the English Channel to the safety and the security of England's green shores from the bloodletting of France. I want to tell you tonight, you can cross over tonight from that hell-bound city to the sunny banks of sweet deliverance because Jesus lay in the cell and took your place 2,000 years ago. But hurry! The devil's dogging your heels. He'll try to trap you in Babylon. Amen. That's why he cries in the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation. Come out of her, my people. Amen. Come out of her, my people. That you be not partakers of her sins. That you receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached in the heaven. And God has remembered her iniquity. And God is calling every man, woman, boy and girl to come out. What is the world that John said not to love? It's Babylon. It's laced with Babylon. Amen. What is the world of sin, pleasure, and materialism that Jesus warns us against? It's Babylon. Babylon has exerted its influence into every echelon of society. Amen. Every religion in the world Amen. And incidentally, Freemasonry copied all of its rights from the religions of the world. Did you know it's very difficult to get anywhere in politics today in the United States of America unless you are a traveling man, traveling east? Amen. You ought to be a Freemason. Amen. To get anywhere today. It's a rare thing, amen, that anybody gets anywhere. What is Freemasonry? Amen. It's Babylon. Amen. It's the rites, right straight from Nimrod and the confusion of tongues. Amen. It's the Roman Catholic Church and Islam. It's the Hindus and it's Confucius. It's all the false religions in the world today. It's everything that would take the place of Jesus Christ. Amen. And did you know, amen, that they're all going to get together in the last days? 17th chapter of Revelation calls that Mystery Babylon. Amen. That's the religion of the last days. The Baha'i religion in uh, uh, Israel and in Palestine today that claims the best of all of them is getting ready to have revival. Amen. Here's what we're going to do. We're all going to get together and we're going to be one nation, one world, one religion. And when they do, the head of it will be the great whore. And finally at last, the Antichrist himself will kill her. Amen. Tonight you need to get saved. We're just about out of time. You need to make your calling and election sure. We don't have much time left. Amen. Come to this altar tonight and surrender your life to God. Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Renounce the world and all its systems, its pleasures, and its false promise. Amen. Renounce the world and all that the devil says you're going to miss. Boy, hoop de do. Amen. Look at all you're missing, preacher. I'm glad I did. 
Because all these folks that got in on it, most of them died before I did. They lived it up. They smoked and drank and chased around. Amen. They're under the ground. I'm still living. Amen. I'm reaping another harvest. I've seen another summer. Amen. By the grace of God, if Jesus tarries, I'll see another fall and another harvest. Another homecoming. Praise God. Hey! Home! Big bunch of the boys that shook hands with me that night and said, Hardy preacher, and mocked me because I got saved. They're dead! They're under the ground! And some of them are flirting with the grave right now. And some of them, their life ain't worth living in the shape they're in. Amen. They're wretched and miserable and blind. Amen. And don't know it. Stand with me and let's pray. Father, help us, Lord, to choose the right city. You said you had prepared for them a city. And Lord, we choose the city of God. We choose the city of thy Jerusalem. We choose, Lord God, the way of the cross that leads home. We run for our lives. We escape, as it were, in the nick of time, to God's altar, to the shelter of his amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. As they sing, let's make our altar and let's cry out to God tonight. Amen.